Hello and welcome back. Lately I've been hearing about a new kind of art technology based on this paper, high resolution image synthesis with latent diffusion models. This artwork here is a product of utilizing my own art fundamentals in tandem with machine learning technology. In this cast, I'll be talking about the general thought process behind my actions when creating a concept painting or illustration. You may have heard of the previous paper or its idea through its software implementation called Stable Diffusion. As I'm a machine learning engineer as well as an artist, I thought I'd try out this open source repository. As I give some context, I'll run a small slideshow of what some mid-journey and stable diffusion images look like from my own experiments. That being said, I won't get too in-depth and theoretical with this paper. You may or may not know this about me, but I don't use social media much at all aside from posting some of my artwork or nice photographs that I took. As such, I came across this piece of technology when one of my colleagues at the company I work at tagged me on Slack with this article by The Verge. An AI-generated artwork's state fair victory feels arguments over what art is. So to summarize briefly, a person entered an art contest by using a paid software called Midjourney AI, which uses parts of the stable diffusion architecture. It's a service that takes textual information and synthesizes art according to the instructions, or so-called prompts. He then used these art outputs and composited them into a final piece, which also won the art contest. Alright, enough context. Let's get into my own exploration of stable diffusion. So this is a sketch that I started creating a month or two ago. I spent between two to three hours on this, which includes the time it took to organize my photographs and mask, mask them out in Photoshop. Most of these pictures are from trips to the Amalfi Coast, Rome, Naples, and Italy, as well as the Izu Peninsula in Japan. The original idea was to make a terraforming concept piece as it was getting ungodly warm and humid in Japan in the month of August. As of now, the base plate is like so. As you can see, I've sketched in some preliminary buildings in the background as well as some placeholder volumes. Fleshing out these buildings or ideas is pretty time consuming and tiring. Above all, all you get is a 2D image which is kind of useless compared to the 3D functionality and reusability of 3D assets. As such, I wanted to try out stable diffusion and see if I could generate some interesting background architecture with minimal effort. If I was pleased with what synthetic art generated for me, I could photobash or composite it back into this rudimentary sketch. So here we are in the stable diffusion UI. The repository that I'm using can be found here. I'll put a link to it in the description. It was only created about 20 or so days ago relative to the time of this recording. So you can really see that this cross-pollination of AI and art is moving rather swiftly. My initial test was the text to image tab, which is the first one. I read online that there's a max token limit or word limit of around 60 to 70 words. And a secondary point of interest and potential pitfall to notice is that the variables in the beginning of the text or prompt holds heavier weight when generating the final image. The images at the beginning of this video were test images that I created. However, now I'll be doing this live, sort of, to show my process. However, I will use my previous prompts as reference points. Later on, I will also use the image to image function to generate more stylized images. One thing I would like for you all to notice is that if you are planning on using image to image, don't use a stylized image as your base image. Start with realism and slowly transition to stylized or anime or Western animation or semi-realistic, whatever you want. So for me, right off the bat, uh, if you look at the base plate I put together, I said terraforming. 
was going to be the core concept of my illustration or concept painting. What I want is some kind of oil rig or industrial looking buildings in the mid background. It'll act as some kind of staging platform between the mid ground and the true background. Once I get the general style of building I like, I'll transfer it to image to image and create some more stylized variations. After that, I'll bring those final images back in Photoshop, bash them in, and see where the piece is. This is the basic heuristic that I think would be the ideal path going forward if you have some degree of art knowledge. Okay, so let's get into some of the terminology, the ones that are displayed on the text to image page. The first thing we see is sampling steps. Uh, this is pretty straightforward. If you move up your sampling steps, if you have more, the more refined your image will be. Uh, next is sampling method. Uh, the default, I think, is uh, Euler A. And you can really choose any of these. If you want to follow along with me, I prefer to use Euler, the most pure form. Uh, next is, or there's restore faces and tiling, which I don't use. Uh, next is batch count and batch size. Batch count is how many images that you'll get at once. If your GPU is not that powerful, just use one. A batch size is how many images you get all at once, or how many images you, in general, to generate. Apologies. Uh, the next one is pretty important, which is CFG scale, which stands for classifier free guidance, which is if you go high, 15, you're basically forcing your text to follow the image. If you're going low at one, it's free. It's freedom. You're like, uh, you're like Jackson Pollock. You're throwing paint onto the canvas and trying to see something there. Uh, afterwards, there's seed and script. I'll get into these two later, but first, uh, why not do something with this? So I'll put my sampling steps at 50. CFG, I think it was at seven before, right? So I'll go seven again. All right, uh, if you guys remember what I said was uh, the beginning of the prompt has heavier weight for your variable. So uh, if there's any artists you like, perhaps you wanna put their name here first. I have a few whose paintings I really admire. First one is a French artist. Her name is Gail Seguilon. Uh, forgive me if I am mispronouncing the name. So she's uh, quite a skilled concept artist. Uh, next is, let's see, who do I like? How about uh, maybe Krenz Kushart? He's a Taiwanese concept painter or illustrator as well. Um, okay, so I put two artist names first. Now I'll get into what I really want. I want some kind of terraforming structure. So it would imply that uh, it would be something far in the future, so futuristic. Yeah, I want some kind of uh, antiquity to it. Maybe I'll just put in antiquity. No, maybe medieval. Medieval or antiquity would both work here. Uh, next, I want architecture, of course, because I want a structure. Um, let me think. Oil rig. Yes, oil rig. I want that. Uh, machinery. Yes. Mechanical machinery pretty similar um i want this to be like pretty realistic so ultra realistic or just realistic would be fine since we're getting pretty far down on the token list or on the text right now so each of the things i put uh, later are not as weighted heavily what else do i want here marble walls yeah why not why not 
Mm. Before that, uh, I mentioned that my uh, painting had photo bash elements from uh, mostly Italy. And I think I'm just going to put Venice in here. Futuristic medieval architecture, oil rig, machinery, ultra realistic, Venice, marble walls. Is there anything else I want? Uh, okay, why not? Let's just go with this height width and generate. See what we get. Hmm, okay. So, if you have been to Venice, you probably know where this is. It's is in St. Marco's Plaza. It's, uh, if you get, if you, if you're facing the Adriatic Sea, it's going to be on your left if you're standing in the San Marco Square. On the very left. Okay, so it's still like pretty close to, uh, it's basically not doing any like art stuff right now. So I'm going to go down here to script. I'm going to change this to XY plot. And since you can see my seed here as at negative one, uh, here I can enter uh, X values and Y values. And then steps is how many steps it will take to generate. So you can think of this as like a kind of a matrix or a pair of lists or arrays. So I already have negative one as a seed here. And then I'll pick like other seed values, which are just basically a uh, randomizing. So five, 10, great. Steps, I will go, so I have steps at 50 right now. So I want to go like every third ish. So 20, 35, 50, great. Maybe I want to, actually I won't change the text here to show you guys what the, uh, what exactly this uh, script does with X type and Y type. So here you go. I will click generate one more time. So here you can see um, what you're getting now is remember how I said seed was negative one, five and 10. So five and 10 gave us different buildings as you can see. And then through the number of steps, so at 20 steps, you get this image. And then at 35, you can see you get another image in C negative one. It's progressively rendering it out to an even more clear image, I would say, or to it had, the machine, the model is getting a clear idea of what you want. As of now, none of these uh, really appeal to me. I don't like, or it's not like I don't like them, but they feel too, how can I say, they feel too mm, realistic, I guess, or they adhere too much. So I'm going to bump up the CFG a little to like nine and maybe add some more into the prompts here. I'm also going to turn off the script for now because it took a longer time for this to run. So I like oil rig, machinery. Mm. It's futuristic medieval architecture. I think I'm going to add this word cinematic. Like I want that movie feel or something you would see in a movie. Um, Venice is like weighted so heavily, even though it's at the end, which is interesting. Hmm. What else do I want? Should I add another uh, an artist in here, perhaps? Hmm. Maybe not. What else? I feel like I'm not having enough here. Octane. <laughs> Unreal Engine. I don't know. Why not? Uh, 
Maybe I want some kind of golden hour. Uh, if you don't know what golden hour is, it's like one of the most beautiful times of day. Uh, especially for photographers, if you're trying to capture uh, or capture like nice stills. Golden hour. Okay, let's go with this. Generate. Hmm. Mm, it's kind of uh, straying from what I really want now. Let's see, let's see. Is there anything else I want in here? Maybe take out castle. I want... What happens if I add the word rippling? Like rippling waves. Crescent. I don't know, these abstract words. Crescent. Interesting, interesting. So this looks like there's some traditional, like, perhaps gothic architecture. Not bad, not bad. Maybe I want... This is kind of like trigger... not triggers, but it's alerting me to the fact that I want some kind of like orthographic image, actually. So I'm going to put like front view, if that makes sense. Makes sense. Excuse me. And perhaps I will turn on, hmm, well, maybe I want to add some kind of like feather. I don't know. This is where the creative process happens. Feather. Oil rig should be, have stronger weight. I don't know why oil rig and machinery aren't showing up. So I think I'll be bringing these two up to Futuristic. Actually, I've put it even before Unreal Engine. I'll go Oil Rig Machinery Unreal Engine. Hold on, I'm going to uh, save this prompt just in case. Okay, we're getting somewhere. It's still like pretty like Venice-y, you know? You still see this um, San Marco building. Uh, here I'm going to go back to the XY plot. I want to see the different kinds of seeds again. 510, sure, why not? Okay, now we're talking. Wow, this one looks really cool for seed negative one at steps 35. Okay, I think, but I also like seed 5 as well. I don't really like seed 10, so I can change this up, go like 20. But I'm liking where this is going. We're getting somewhere. I'm going to combine front view with architecture, as I mentioned before. And then... I will maybe change the CFG scale to maybe 11? No, no, no. I'll go back to 7. Okay. Yes. Yes. Seed 20 looks pretty sweet. I don't like seed 5 as much anymore. Seed negative 1 is not bad, to be honest. Seed 5. Bring this to uh, hmm, 40. And this is after lowering the CFG scale or classifier free guidance. Okay. 20 looks really nice. I really, really like it front view. I'm going to bring up front view architecture a little higher. Like so. Oil rig machinery. Should I add the words terraforming? Maybe it'll help. And always uh, try to save your prompts. 
that's uh, pretty useful. Quite useful. Okay, we're getting somewhere. I don't like seed 40. I do like seed 20. This is pretty cool. I'm just gonna bump up, change the seed again, 45. But I'm think I'm looking at 20. I'm liking what I'm seeing. Front view architecture terraform. The thing is, when I think about like perspective, the perspective is like kind of off on what I had. Like, if I compare with my original base plate, the perspective is not like that close together. If that makes sense. So I'm trying to get like. Trying to get them to match up more clearly. I'll move down oil rig machinery. I want front view architecture to have more weight. Maybe I even want oil rig to go after medieval. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Seed 20 is looking strange now. Seed 45 is looking sweet. Holy moly. I love this one, actually. Okay, so if we take a good look at these, I really like 50. Or not 50, seed negative 1 looks good. Seed 20. I don't really like it anymore. Seed 45 is really cool, but I wish there was a little bit more blue in it, but I won't do anything there with it. Uh, when I, s I, I like the ocean waves. Maybe I'll add in waves here. And I, I, I want like more I was thinking I want more like some kind of aquamarine color, but, or teal. I'll just add an ocean waves here for now. And I don't want that to be in front of golden hour. Now that I think of it, the ocean waves at the end, very far down. Okay. As I mentioned, I don't like C20. I'll change the C25. How about that? And generate. Ooh. Now we are talking. I like this. I, I like, I like what's happening here. 20. Like seed 25 and seed 45 look so good. This one's like not even bad. I like it. Okay. I had ocean waves. I want to, if I, I'm going to put an aquamarine in front of this just to see. Uh, what's a deep like green color, deep green color. Google, please. A deep bluish green. Cerulean. Okay, I'll, I'll go aquamarine. Okay. Okay. It's coming together. I even like the first one now. That looks sweet. C negative one. This looks legit. This looks really cool now. These all look so cool. Okay. I think now at this point, it's at like a good base. I'm thinking between seed 25 and seed 45. 
I'm a little bit hesitant on using seed 25 because seed 45 is more of like a pure image if that makes sense. There's like no giant flaming sun in the back to like mess stuff up but ordinarily this would be the case but I want to show you all the power of image to image. So C25, I will try with C25 first. Remember C25 and C45 are of interest to us. Go back to script, change that to none, C25. We should get a large image of this center one. So how cool is that? How cool is this? It must be because I added this feather, this, these random like words, and you get like this really unique stuff. Even negative one. Let's, let's see. Let's see what it is. Oh, what? What? It looks like that? Damn. I, I love it. I, I love all of them, actually. Okay, why don't we remember, so negative 1, 25, 45, easy. I think I'm going to try on all of them actually. So next stage of the concept art process, we have iterated, we have found something we like. Now it's time to stylize. Send to image to image on this thing. Make sure you have your decided image. Now. Once you've clicked this, go to image to image. Your image should be here. Great. Now we have a new uh, UI. Some things are repeating, some things are not repeating. So yeah, let's get into it. Same thing. You have prompts here and you also have sampling steps. I will also change these around. So B50, sampling method, I said I liked Euler, we will go Euler. Keep batch count, batch size the same, CFG. Now we have a new one called denoising strength. The higher it is, the more likely that you're going to get something original. And when it's lower, you're basically getting like very, like, basically unnoticeable changes or quite like tertiary changes it was at 0 0.75 originally so and once again we also have um this uh these script options so, uh, if the xy plot is the previous one that we we all used anyway this process is quite similar but the point of image to image is to take this image and to transform it into something else so it could be you could think of it as stylization this is what i usually think of this phase as so you can see here it looks like the original image looks pretty realistic i would say it's like there's a lot of like brushwork, but overall, the overall vibe I get is that it's realistic. So now we want to go a little bit more stylized. And so here you can put in some more new prompts here. I am going to remain same, usually with my two choices of artists. Gail Segalon. Sorry, I don't know how to say this. My French is not that good. And Krenz, Kush hurt. Kush, uh, sorry, mouse, Kush hurt. And futuristic, of course. Oil rig, terraforming. Uh, do I want to double down on Venice? Sure. 
Okay, I, I got an idea right now. Since I keep saying Venice, why don't I put in Aria the animation here? Maybe it'll stylize it in the form of like the Aria anime. We'll see. We'll see. Generate. Let's go. What do we get? That doesn't look like Arya the animation to me, but I like it. So I'm going to keep generating a different, uh, a few more of these, but I, I say this is something you decided on, something that you really like. Then what we can do is we take this, we send it to extras. After clicking send to extras, it should show up here. And now I have these custom upscalers. I will choose Ultra Mix Restore because remember, this is at around 512 by 512. It's too small, so let's go generate. And I'm resizing it by two, so it should be at around uh, 2048 by 2048. Holy moly, these are sweet. Dang, these are so cool. These are all like really good. I'm going to like save all of these. <laughs> Negative one, five, and ten. Look how like vivid these colors are. These are incredible, actually. Okay, so negative one first, turn this off. Why? Why? So 25 and 45, they look legit. Yeah, I don't mind it. I could use some more golden hour though. Here, this one I'll turn off the seed I'll just or I turn off the yeah the three by three I'll just go negative one and it seems like C negative one keeps giving us some really variable stuff like this yeah we had our fun with this one now let us try this one send to image to image. So we have a new base image to generate from. We already have golden hour here. So I will take out golden hour and I want aquamarine. I want this like, I want to match what we have on this palette. Also, I'll bring the seed back to negative one and I'll turn on the XY plot again, since I want to see. Okay, moving up aquamarine, change the look little bit I do like this whatever negative one is giving me I do like that why not let's try it negative one turn off this generate Dude, that is so cool like it might not be in the same color space that I want but I'm going to play a little bit more with this aquamarine. I'm going to turn it to turquoise. Did I even spell turquoise correctly? I'm just going to copy and paste it. I don't think I spelled it correctly. Okay. I like turquoise. Turquoise is good. And it's also resembling like the color palette that I also really enjoy. It's like greenhouse gases into the air. So it should be like you're, you're generating an ozone layer. So it should be like, like foggy, you know, like it should be like muggy, I should say. 
Okay, go back to XY plot. I'm going to change these just some more randomness. Generate. Wow. Okay. I'm really liking C30. C20 is like they're not bad. They're they're really really like they're great actually. Great. Holy wow. Maybe I don't need golden hour after all. It didn't really seem that it didn't, I didn't really get something new from adding the word metal. I think I'm going to add the word rust as well. Okay, so I hope you get the idea for that portion of the process. To reiterate, I was creating a selection of Photobash pieces that I thought were aesthetically pleasing, at least to me. Now I'll be integrating them back into my initial base plate to create a new final base plate. Afterwards, I'll be putting this final base plate into the image to image function of stable diffusion. I won't put the entire photo bash process recording in this video, but in another video. Feel free to watch that time lapse if you want a better idea of how I place the ima those images back into the concept sketch. Alright, now that the base plate is finished, it's time to take it back into stable diffusion. As I have alluded to previously, I'll be using image to image this time. Stable Diffusion will be using this base plate as its initial weight. That's why I intentionally separated the foreground, the midground, and background value-wise, as I wanted atmospheric perspective to be evident throughout the generated images. So, parameter-wise, I'll more or less be using the same values from before. So, Euler, sampling steps 50 sure that's in uh, and then sh uh, I'll put denoising down to 0 0.55 and I'll put the CFG up to like 9 or 9.5 sure uh, however I will be trying to aim for a 2.35 aspect ratio which means that I'll be using the scaled down parameters of width 1344 and height 576. The reason I chose these parameters is because my computer will actually not be able to handle this. My GPU cannot handle values that exceed this height and width when doing image to image. So it's unfortunate, but that's deep learning for you. Okay, and now I'll put putting in the prompt, which is kind of the same but I've added some more um, other words so wide lens low angle shot uh, desaturated and I found that using split toning seems to help a lot and since you want people usually when you're doing concept pieces of environments you usually want some people in there for scale so I added this small crowds of people and also added some um, like inspirations, Final Fantasy XIV and Aria the Animation as always. So here we go. Generate. And there we go. We have something right here. So send to extras. And yeah, later on, uh, I'll take this into Photoshop, work on it a little bit, and then you can see the end result. So more or less, this is the idea. Uh, you can, uh, th or more, more or less, this is how I approach um, using stable diffusion or these AI art tools as a, um, I really enjoyed this term coined by Scott Eaton. Um, he's quite a world famous, world renowned sculptor and also a creative technologist. Um, he coined the term uh, creative collaborator, I believe, and this is basically how I use stable diffusion. I use it to 
I basically use it to replace my photo reference phase. So whenever you start um, creating a piece, you usually look for photo references and then you can bring those in later as um, your assets and then you paint over them. What I do is I use Stable Diffusion to replace the photo reference phase and just immediately generate something that I want. And it's more bespoke and tailored to the direction of the piece in my mind. So hopefully this is um, helpful to everyone. Uh, I really made it as a reference for myself and I think I'll be trying to use uh, Stable Diffusion on characters next, so we'll see. Alright, thank you and goodbye for now.